Well, good evening. Uh, this is Jim Monroe. I'm going to present to you an open channel flow problem. Uh, what I'd like to do tonight is to show you two different ways to solve the same problem. And this is a problem that we run into on the civil PE exam. The distinguishing characteristic about the two different methods is the time it takes to execute them. So what I'm going to start out with is sort of the plain vanilla method that you see in textbooks. You also see it in uh, PE review materials from various um, uh, authors and publishers. So let me just show you that quickly here. So we have for our uh, givens, we have a concrete line trapezoidal open channel and uh, they tell us that this thing has a longitudinal slope of 0.34 percent. Now in all of our equations, regardless of approach, when we talk about percents we have to add on the double zero. So the slope here is really 0 0.0034 when they tell us it is 0.34 percent. The base width of the thing is 1.5 meters, that's right here. The side slopes of the thing is 2.1, that's right here, two horizontal to one vertical. And the channel is designed to convey a peak discharge, meaning a Q, or mass flow rate, of 15 cubic meters per second. And then they give us a Manning's end that corresponds to the concrete lined up here at 0 0.015. They want us to find the depth of flow. The depth of flow is this dimension here, the Y. So the way typically you're asked to do this is we would use uh, Manning's equation. Now, what's the problem with Manning's equation? There really, is not a, there really is not a problem with Manning's equation, except that if you look at it, we have nested parameters. The cross-sectional area term, for example, is also inside the uh, hydraulic radius term. It's nested inside of it. So this is kind of a hassle when you try to compute this thing, when you try to run it out. For most problems, it becomes indeterminate. And that's the case that we have here. So if I poke, poke into Manning's equation, everything that we know, and keep the format on it, we wind up with this equation, A, cross-sectional area, times the hydraulic radius to the two-thirds is equal to 3.86. Now, I, I notice looking at the geometry of the cross-section that the cross-sectional area is this, the wetted perimeter is this, and the hydraulic radius, of course, is the cross-sectional area divided by the wetted perimeter. So how would I go ahead and figure out what the depth is using this governing equation of A, R to the two-thirds is equal to 3.86? Well, because it has nested parameters, because it is indeterminate, that's what I have down here, indeterminate, we have to run this thing out using a trial and error method. So what I do is I set up my governing equation right down here, and I pull it apart in my worksheet. I put together a trial depth, put together a cross-sectional area that would result from that depth, a wetted perimeter that would result from that depth, and of course a hydraulic radius that would result from that depth. So running that out for a depth of one meter, I get 2.54. And this, of course, is low when I compare it to the 3.86. Then if I use a 1.3, I wind up overshooting the 3.86 because I get a 4.31. And then if I drop back down to a 1.2, I get something on the other side of 3.86. So I now know that my answer lies somewhere between these two values. And in fact, if I move down the page just a little bit here, <clears throat> you'll notice that if you continue to refine these values up here between these two values, that you will come up with a 1.24 meter depth. Now the problem with this is even though it's all correct and so on, uh, the problem is that it takes too much time. Remember on the civil PE exam, you have about six minutes per problem to come up with stuff. So what's the alternative method? Well, let me show you that. If we go on to page two of this, I'm going to introduce a, the same problem, except I'm going to change up the numbers on it, the figures on it. So here, what we have is a bottom width of 10 feet. We have side slopes of two to one. 
we have a Manning's N that's commensurate with what we had before. We have a channel slope that's much flatter than the earlier version, and we have a flow rate 2500 CFS. So this particular problem is the same geometry, the same everything, except the units are now customary instead of metric, and the dimensions are different. We need to find the depth of flow in the channel just like we did before, so that doesn't, that doesn't bother anybody. So what's the best way to do this particular problem? Well, what I'm going to do is use something called the Handbook of Hydraulics, and it's written by King and Bratter. So the term that we use for this in the field is called King's Handbook of Hydraulics. King's Handbook of Hydraulics. Now, King and Bratter were two Stanford University professors. Their first edition of this Handbook of Hydraulics came out 100 years ago, the year 1913. In that, uh, they were expressing and, and displaying the uh, uh, particulars of hydraulics as we knew them then. Subsequent editions of their uh, uh, book, of their Handbook of Hydraulics, included research that they had completed and these uh, books, the, this Handbook of Hydraulic, the editions continued over their lifetime and beyond. There are actually people living now who edit this book, even though the original authors have, have long since passed. Well, what these guys did is something rather unique. They came up with the uh, Manning's equation, but you'll notice that it looks a little bit different. They actually took some of the parameters in Manning's equation and jammed them into a particular uh, coefficient that they created called conveyance, K. Now, there, as you can imagine, uh, you can take different parameters in Manning's and jam them into K conveyance. And so you wind up with a few different versions of King's equations, they're called. Okay? So this is Manning's with different elements or parameters jammed into the K value called conveyance. And then they generated, these two men, they, they generated numerical tables that took the indeterminacy out of this equation. So, what I do is I go to these tables and I find the form of the equation that is basically Manning's removed around by uh, King and Bratter, and I find the version of them that suits my givens. In other words, I want to find the version where I know everything. And if you look at this version here, where I have lowercase b, which is bottom width, I have s, which is slope in the, in the dimension of flow, I have the Manning's n there, I have the q, I know everything here but k. And so what I do is I populate that equation down here, whoops, I populate that equation down here best I can, and you'll notice the only thing I don't know is k, and so I find what k is. And you say, well, what do I need to know k for? I'm going to enter the numerical tables that match with this particular equation here that I determined k from. Okay? So, doing so, here is my king's table. Now, this is one uh, sheet out of a set of tables. You'll notice up at the top that I have a q equation up there, q, k prime over n, b to the eight-thirds, etc. This particular uh, equation changes on, on each page of the King's Handbook where these numerical tables are run out for different values of k. You'll also notice on this, whoops, you'll also notice on this particular thing that we have a d over b ratio, d is depth, we want that in this problem, that's what we're trying to find. B is the bottom width that was given to us. And then we also have these side slopes over here, which is these numbers right here. The side slopes were given to us, they were given to us as a 2 to 1. So what I did is I took this particular table and I highlighted the 2 to 1 uh, side slopes of the channel. I then just now calculated just now calculated the K, and that K is going to be in the body down here, but the only pieces I care about are inside the 2 to 1 column. So what I'm looking for then is where do they intersect, and remember, I don't know if you do, but remember that in our problem here, I found that our K value was about 
7, 5.7 there, if I can get my stuff to work here. Uh, sorry about that. 5.7. So the 5.7, the 5.7 I want to find, sorry about that, the 5.7 that I calculated, I enter into this table in the column of 2 to 1 side slopes, and then I move over a line, this red one here, I move that over until it tells me what the D over B ratio is, which in this case is going to be a 1.33. So then I go back with that D over B ratio back up here with my D over B ratio and I say find D over B is 1.33 or the depth is 1.33 times the bottom width B which is 10 is given so my depth is 13.33 so you'll notice at this point then that I have just taken a problem that takes a long time because of, of trial and error trying to figure out the numbers and I've come up with a value very quickly simply with no trial and error uh, no screwing around on it, simply because these authors, King and Bratter, came up with a job aid that removed the indeterminacy from the problem. So again, if we go back up here to our first approach, you're kind of stuck using Mannings, and you're kind of stuck with trying to deal with, as best you can, the fact that you have nested parameters and an indeterminate situation, and you're churning on this, chewing up expensive uh, time on the exam. But if we try a different method, same kind of problem, just different numerical values, and instead I consult the King's Handbook of Hydraulics tables, I can compute this thing and look at the number of steps I have here. I can compute this very quickly and definitively. I shopped for my form of King's equation, which I found on the tables. I then solved for K. I then entered the body of the table taking into account taking into account the fact that I had two to one side slopes given to me and what I'm after is to figure out what the D over B ratio is because I'm given B bottom width and I can then solve for depth so it's very quick very nice now one thing I should warn you about is that um, the numerical tables come in two different uh, systems of units. The table I'm showing you here is in customary units. If you want metric versions, then you're looking for the later editions, the newer ones, the newer editions of King's Handbook of Hydraulics. If you want the customary units versions of these, you have to go to the older versions, the earlier editions. Okay. So that's my problem for tonight. Uh, thank you all for hanging out, and we'll see you next time.